Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we are going to talk about interacting with elements. In previous videos, we talked about using Dart to manipulate some of the elements on the web page. However, we don't we did not yet review interacting. So this is an example here. Here's a simple design. When you think about web applications, you typically input information, you hit buttons, you see responses, and you interact with them, right? That's what we're going to learn right now. In my mind, I'm going to make a simple web application right here. And in my mind, you have to have an idea of what you're going to what you want the application to look like and what it's going to do. If you don't have that, you need to go back to the drawing board. That's super important. Okay? So here I'm going to say I'm going to put in a number. When I hit the submit button, the results are going to display right down here. Very nice and simple, pretty basic. I'm not sure what you're going to do with it, but at least it's a learning tool, right? So I have all my parts together. Input, type equals number, ID equals number, value equals 10, same thing. Here, input button, ID equals submit, value equals submit. And some of you, if you went to the W3 schools, you might know that it, I think it said type equals submit. That was another option as well. Personal preference, same thing. Okay. Um, I believe, I believe this way when it's button, I ID equals submit. I think there's a different, uh, it, that does affect, it's more flexible um, with regard to styling. So, um, so CSS. Again, that's not my strong suit, so I don't know that for a fact, but just practical purposes here, it's the same thing. Okay. Once you get more advanced and you learn more about it, you'll probably want it. Um, you have a preference one way or the other. Here's the div. ID equals div. Okay. So what I want to do is get all of these elements and create them into objects. Okay. So then once we get an object, we can start manipulating it. Right. So how do I do that? Well, we learned from last time that I'm going to say div element div equals query query selector or document dot query selector is okay too. <clears throat> div so we'll create it a div object and again if you want to you know use var and just use dynamic typing perfectly fine i personally prefer static typing just my personal preference so that that's what i'm, I'm doing now but if you want to put var for everything that's perfectly acceptable as well so um i'm gonna say button input element i'll just call it submit equals query selector um what was that called again um, submit. I think it was the submit was the ID. And the text input element, I'll just put, call that input equals query selector. I think it was called number. Number. Okay. So now we made three objects. Now I can start manipulating those objects, right? So what did I want to do? I wanted to click on submit and have Dart react to it. So what you need is what we call an event listener. And how the event listener works here is that you use the object. Okay, so the method has to work upon the object. And it's on click is the event. Listen for this event. And that's just the general syntax. Okay, so on click dot listen. The general syntax for this is it's on click dot listen, and then you have an anonymous function right inside here. You could make it a single line function, so you'll sometimes see this also. So either one would be perfectly acceptable. You have to put the semicolon sometimes it throws me off right there and what we see is that right here for the event listener um, this value right here is a parameter it's an argument and it's a piece of data you get from on click so when it's clicking this is a click value but I don't really want that right now what I want is div dot <clears throat> text equals input value right input dot value 
right? That's what we wanted to do. We'll save it, reload, input dot value. I'll have a four, and it becomes a four. Okay, so if I click on submit, listen for that. Once I do, there is some the click value, but I don't really need that. I just want to be able to to list the value of input into the div div dot text right inside here. Okay. So sometimes this value is important. If it is important, you typically put a value there. For example, E, and it happens to have the value of mouse event. How do I know that? I just kind of do. If you don't believe me, what you can always do is dynamic typing, right? And just say E dot run time type dot to string because it has to be a string if it's going to be text, right? So what is that actually going to be? If I click on this, it'll give me a mouse event. That's the type. So it is actually mouse event. And, and sometimes you need this value in and of itself to do something. A click, you really don't when you think about it, right? But but in other situations, if it's a keyboard, if it's something else, you might need this a, a value right here to do something with it, okay? I, I think we're going to go over that in the future um, examples, but just to know that for right now. Um, let me think here if there was anything else. Um, okay, a couple other things. What if, for example, I change my mind? I want from now on... Every single time I go up and down on this thing, I want it, this thing to change every single time I click. By the way, this idea, I click, it changes. I click, it changes. That's what we call synchronous programming. Okay, so you might hear these terms asynchronous and synchronous. Asynchronous basically means is that these things happen without any particular desired intervention Let, that 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 was terrible so so in other words it, what if i would click here change this on a regular basis this would change in real time i click here it changes here i click here it changes here that's asynchronous programming information is constantly being sent from the browser to the um dart program and sending information back so that's asynchronous when it's synchronous nothing gets sent over until I interact with it and tell it to send over. So it sends data over when I tell it to, not when I don't. That's synchronous. When it just goes automatically, that is asynchronous. Stuff is just going back and forth constantly. Okay? So asynchronous programming is a lot more advanced. We're not going to go over that for any time soon, but we will hopefully in the future if I ever get there. Okay? So um, what did I want to do? Oh, yeah, that's right. So instead of on click, I might want to do this as an on change. So anytime I change the value for here, it's going to retype this in right there. Okay. A on change, I still don't need mouse event E. I can just leave that alone. I'll say input value. Let's see if that works. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's not going to work because I have to change this to input. Again, automatically formats it. Hitting submit no longer does anything because I removed it right there, right? But how about if I change this value? Every time I change it, it's going to change right through here, right? So it's still not synchronous. Why? See, it's not changing there. It has to actually interact with it. Oh, it's got to be a number. It has to actually, oh, by the way, um, I'm hitting the enter key. Enter. See, it, I have to actually interact with it in order and actually change this value in order for this to actually be printed out through there. Okay. So on change, on click, we're going to probably go through an, a few more of these methods that act upon these objects. But that's the basis or the basics of interacting with the elements. And we're going to keep going from there. Next, I'm going to see if we can start building more things to get more experience on interacting with the elements. Thank you.